What is up, comic fans? Welcome to the Legion of Comics. Man, oh man, there's some big news buzzing around the brand new Wonder Woman 800 that'll be hitting shelves next month. And it's going to be the first appearance of Diana's daughter, Trinity. So I know that there's a lot of FOMO already going around, probably some speculation on who this character could be, who's the dad going to be, all that kind of stuff. And it made me stop and think, I've been here before. I've read this story before. So let's take a deep dive or a semi deep dive. Let's just take a glancing look over the course of comic history at the many kids of Diana Prince, Wonder Woman. Big shout out to the channel sponsors, Big Time Collectibles. They sponsor the monthly Legion Loot giveaway for the channel members. So hit the join button down below and become a channel member today and follow them on Instagram and Facebook to not miss out on any of their drops. And if you need anything clean or press, hit up my good friend Justin over on Instagram. Let him know you found him via the channel and take advantage of the special offers for viewers of the channel. And a huge shout out to my local comic shop and local sponsor, the Augusta Book Exchange, or now it's as it's now known as ABX Comics and Games. They just moved to a brand new location. So be sure to check the links in the description to all my videos, to all the sponsors, including Pops Attic on Instagram. You do not want to miss out. There's a huge announcement coming really soon from that. So let's get into it. Wonder Woman, Trinity, huge issue number 800 milestone is right around the corner. They're already trying to bill it out and get some FOMO or fear of missing out moving around. They got a brand new character announced called Trinity, who is the daughter of Diana Prince, and they have not announced or made official who the father is going to be but they have said that this story is supposed to be set in the future so it's not going to be in today's current timeline but the future is it a possible future a potential future the actual future who knows only time will tell but like i said i feel like i've been here before this is definitely nothing new and i know a lot of people jump for this kind of stuff but if we all just take a pause take a breath and let's actually look at the evidence we have. How many times have they told this story? How many times have they done this? And have any of them ever really caught on? Have any of them ever really held some kind of monetary value or collecting or investing value? And to be honest with you, for me, just some of them are just really good stories. And that's about all that I get out of them. And I'll even touch on that a little bit later in the video. But let's go ahead and kick it off. We're going to try to do these in their uh, appearance order. And uh, yeah. Wet my whistle before we get started. Now let's kick it off with the first one. It's going to be Hippolyta Trevor. First appeared in Wonder Woman issue number 300 in 1983. Now, this is Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor's daughter. She went by Lita, short for Hippolyta. She also went by the superheroine name of Fury. She was born with superhuman abilities that were the same attribute as her mom. Now, like I said, she was the daughter of Wonder Woman from Earth 2. Now, pre-crisis on Infinite Earth in the 80s, Earth 2 was the home of all the Golden Age DC comic characters. So this is the daughter of Golden Age Wonder Woman. And after Crisis on Infinite Earths, they did do a little bit of retconning here. Since Earth 2 was erased from existence, she no longer had the ties to that Wonder Woman. They retconned her history completely and linked her with modern characters and eventually kind of just faded into obscurity. Next up, and this one's kind of like a, a kind of a sad one. Now, this is an Elseworlds title from 1998 called Superman Distant Fires. And we see in this one the son of Superman and Wonder Woman named Bruce Kent. Now, this story is a post-apocalyptic horror story, really. I mean, it's heartbreaking. You have the whole world goes to crap. All the heroes lose their power. Superman thinks he's the only one left. He eventually finds... Other survivors, including Wonder Woman and Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman immediately woos over him, leaving Captain Marvel super jealous. Her and Billy Batson had an old fling, and he ends up taking his revenge on them, teaming up with Metallo, killing Wonder Woman, having a huge battle, this, that, and the third. Long story short, short the Earth is just in shambles, and it's slowly dying and getting ready to be uninhabitable and blow up like Krypton did before it. Clark gets a Green Lantern ring and fastens a spaceship out of the willpower and just like how he got to earth he sends his son bruce off into the cosmos staying behind and eventually meeting the terrible end with the rest of the inhabitants of earth leaving bruce kent the last son of two dying worlds so it's kind of sad it's a weird else world if you're a fan of captain marvel this one might be a little heartbreaking for you to watch it's kind of rough around the edges to be honest with you 1998 was a little bit edgier of a year back then but definitely uh, interested to see whatever happened to this kid. It'd be something that would be worth revisiting because we haven't really seen how this kid's story plays out. Next one, and this potentially is my favorite one. We have Hyperman. 
He's coming from the pages of the Kingdom, issue number one from 1999. It was a two-issue series that was the follow-up to the critically acclaimed greatest of all time story, Kingdom Come. At the epilogue, at the end of Kingdom Come, if you get it in a collected format, you get the little meeting of Superman, Wonder Woman, and Bruce Wayne at Planet Krypton. And that's where they announce that Superman and Wonder Woman are pregnant with Hyperman here. He wasn't Hyperman at the time. He was just their child. But following that story up in the kingdom as a baby, he gets taken by Magog. Long story short, this character, Hyperman, saved the little baby and protected him inside of Hypertime. And it was actually his future self saving himself as he was a baby. Super cool character here. Son of Superman and Wonder Woman again. And it's uh, Jonathan is the first person to ever be born with the power to travel through and manipulate Hypertime. Now, Hypertime is the realm of intersecting timelines. That's what the Flash can access pretty much inside of the Speed Force. It's kind of connected there. Now, I love this suit. I got to be honest with you. That cape he has reminds me of the Phantom Stranger. Just super cool character. Tons of potential. I cannot believe this character hasn't been picked up and used countless times. But this is probably my favorite out of the ones on this list. Next up, and this one has a huge influence on my life. It's Supergirl from the Dark Knight Strikes Again. Issue number two is her first appearance in 2002. Now, this is the direct follow-up to the Dark Knight uh, Returns by Frank Miller. Like, everyone knows that story. This follows it up, and this again is the daughter of Superman and Wonder Woman. She's inherited both Kryptonian and Amazon powers from her parents. She's raised on Paradise Island. She's a fierce warrior. She was kept separate from her father, though she knew who her father was. She idolized him heavily. Long story short, Brainiac invades. She comes out of hiding and helps fight him back and uh, restore Kandor to a proper city and do away with Brainiac. Now, she, like I said, is absolutely fierce. But because of her being raised on Paradise Island, she has her mother's temperament. And though she idolized her father, she thought she, he was kind of weak and that he should be like ruling with a heavier hand and stuff. Now, she shares the name of her grandmother, Lara, L-A-R-A. And that's actually what my daughter's name is, Lara, L-A-R-A. Love that name. Gorgeous name. This is a dope character. And we will see her again. Next up, we have Fury. This is the daughter, probably the most wicked one right here between Steppenwolf and Wonder Woman. Now, this is from Earth 2, Issue 8 from 2013. I know Earth 2, I said earlier, was gone. Well, post uh, New 52, Earth 2 was back. It was a brand new continuity, brand new timeline, everything. Earth 2, again, was the home of the Golden Age characters. Darkseid sent an invasion to this Earth to test its metal and absolutely demolished them. Steppenwolf kills Diana and takes this kid and trains her on Apocalypse as a Fury. Names her Fury. She has this crazy whip. Turns out to be his daughter. So absolutely savage character here. Steppenwolf was an absolute savage in that run. I would highly suggest reading Tom Taylor's Earth 2 run. Uh, it's so good that I actually named my Sunday night live stream after it. The At Weeks In live stream was named after At World's In. So uh, definitely a wicked one here. I think it's pretty interesting to have Wonder Woman and Steppenwolf linked up like that, given especially their history inside of the Zack Snyder films. Super cool there. Next up, and here we go, returning to Frank Miller's Dark Knight universe in the Dark Knight Volume 3. I want to touch on that there. So, in the Dark Knight Volume 3, Superman and Wonder Woman have another child. He has godlike abilities that have yet been fully explored. Explored In, the, in Dark Knight Volume 3, we pretty much only see him as an infant riding on Wonder Woman and a little baby Bjorn while she fights to save the world from the invading uh, Kryptonians that were released previously from Kandor. And uh, this kid, we don't really see like him really take off until the, uh, what's it called? The Dark Knight Golden Child that came out, I think, two or three years ago. And that is where this panel is from, where we see Jonathan. He's almost like this higher being that just thinks and contemplates. He just has all these abilities that don't really touch into it all. It's almost like a Dr. Manhattan-esque thing. He's super creepy in a sense, but he's uh, it seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. I do want them to continue dabbling in stories inside of this universe. But as of now, the Golden Child one-shot is as far as the timeline has gone with Frank Miller's Dark Knight stuff. But this is Lara's brother, this Lara. So it's her younger sibling. And next up, this is one that I noticed that most people knew when I mentioned this subject out in a live stream earlier in the week. And that is none other than Hunter Prince from Justice League, issue number 26. This comes from a story called Justice League Legacy. It was published in 2017. The story takes place in the main timeline, but this is an actual son of Wonder Woman and the darkness, the evil, this uh, evil energy, physical embodiment kind of thing. Very, it gets really weird. And it's from an alternate timeline altogether. Has Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman's powers through and through. She's got her bracelets. 
got the bracelets of submission, the lasso of truth, and the tiara. He was sent off to go live with Superman and Lois. He thinks Wonder Woman sent him away because he doesn't love him. Just so, this is a very weird one here. It gets into the timeline stuff. It gets really convoluted, really crazy. I haven't went through and read this whole series or anything like that. And uh, I it was hard to do any kind of research on it without going into the weeds. So just straightforward. This is one, I think, because it's one of the most recent ones that people are aware of. But I'm not too sure how many people I know outside of Paul Cook and Brother John's comics that have actually probably dove into this story in depth. I'm going to have to go ask around because I'm super curious now. But that brings us to this year. Trinity. She'll be appearing in Wonder Woman issue number 800 this year. We don't know her father is, have no clue about her powers, but we see that she has double lassos. We don't know what Earth she'll take place on or anything about her. I'm definitely curious. But the crazy thing about this list right here is this isn't all of them. There are plenty more of Wonder Woman's children. It just was enough here to kind of prove the point that this has been done to death. So do not go out there overpaying for this book if you score when it cover good on you don't pay a penny over cover for this book it was only what two years ago they brought us yara floor and have done nothing with that character so i'd rather see them take the time to develop yara floor and bring her full front and uh, give her some room to breathe and room to win over some fans but will i pick up wonder woman 800 absolutely am i doing it because of trinity not one bit couldn't care less i hope that i like the character but i'm getting really excited for tom king's wonder woman issue one that follows issue 800 and I do believe that 800 is a good landmark issue to jump in and jump on and start diving into the character and looking forward to this brand new run. Maybe she'll return for that run somewhere along the way. Maybe it's something that TK has planned to do with the character in some kind of alternate future story type line that he'll do. We know he's big at playing with timelines and stuff, so we'll see. Needless to say, don't overpay for it. It's been done to death. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which one of these were your favorite children of Wonder Woman. Are you excited for Wonder Woman issue 800? Will you be picking up the brand new Dawn of DC Wonder Woman issue 1 when it drops, written by Tom King? Go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that join button, become a member of the channel. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.